listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 354. We're continuing in the book of Ezra. The Jews are trying to rebuild the temple of the Lord, but then the Persians get a little upset and they write nasty letters to the king of Persia saying, These no good Jews are trying to build a temple. So Darius gets the memo. And in chapter six, he decides to search the archives in Babylon. This is a very, very long Google search. All the information is stored in the capital of Media. And guess what? King Darius realizes that Cyrus, the previous king, really did allow the Jews to go rebuild the temple. So as if Cyrus's word was more powerful than the Lord's, Darius makes sure that the people are able to rebuild the temple and the city of Jerusalem. Not only are they going to let them, they're going to pay for it, including all the sacrifices of the young bulls, rams, and sheep that the people need. The Jews celebrate Passover, and all in all, it seems like a great day. In chapter 7, we remember the scribe Ezra. Well, apparently, we find out in chapter 7 he was a big fan of the Lord. Not only the Lord, but his laws. He knows the laws of Moses. So, he gets to leave the confines of the palace and journey out to Jerusalem to get a first-hand look at this newly rebuilt temple and city. In the New Testament, we're continuing in the book of Revelation. Chapter 12 gets pretty intense. John sees a woman, not just any woman, but a woman who is clothed with the sun and moon under her feet. She has a crown. She's screaming in labor pain. But just as she's trying to give birth to a baby, there's a massive red dragon with seven heads and crowns and ten horns. This is probably a very expensive film shot. It's probably you've probably never seen this in any Bible movie. In fact, I don't think there's ever been a Bible movie about these events in Revelation. If there is, let me know in the show notes. But anyway, woman delivers a baby boy. Then a war breaks out in heaven with Michael the Archangel and all of his soldiers attacking the dragon. It's a big action scene. The dragon isn't defeated so easily. Then the dragon attacks those where it really is going to hurt the Lord, the followers of Jesus. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Ezra chapter 6, the order of Darius. So King Darius gave an order to search the writings of the kings before him. The writings were kept in Babylon in the same place the money was kept. A scroll was found in the fortress of Ekbatan, which is in the territory of Media. This is what was written on that scroll. Official note, during the first year that Cyrus was king, he gave an order about the temple of God in Jerusalem. The order said, Let the temple of God be rebuilt. It will be a place to offer sacrifices. Let its foundations be built. The temple must be 27 meters high and 27 meters wide. Its wall will be in layers that have three rows of large stones and one row of wooden timbers. The cost of building the temple must be paid for from the king's treasury. Also, the gold and silver things from God's temple must be put back in their places. Nebuchadnezzar took them from the temple in Jerusalem and brought them to Babylon. They must be put back in God's temple. So, King Darius sent this message to his officials. To Tetanai, governor of the area west of the Euphrates River, to Shathar, Bazanai, and to all the officials living in that territory. I order you to stay away from Jerusalem. Do not bother the workers or try to stop the work on this temple of God. Let the Jewish governor and the Jewish leaders rebuild it. Let them rebuild God's temple in the same place as it was in the past. Now, I give you this order to help the Jewish leaders building God's temple. Pay the full cost of the building from the king's treasury. The money will come from the taxes collected from the provinces in the area west of the Euphrates River. 
do these things quickly so that the work will not stop. Give them anything they need. They need any young bulls, rams, or lambs for sacrifices to the God of heaven. Give these things to them. If the priests of Jerusalem ask for wheat, salt, wine, and oil, give these things to them every day without fail. Give them to the Jewish priests so that they may offer sacrifices that please the God of heaven. Give these things so that the priests may pray for me and my sons. Also, I give this order. If anyone changes this order, a wooden beam must be pulled from their house and pushed through their body. Then their house must be destroyed until it is only a pile of rocks. God put his name there in Jerusalem. May God defeat any king or other person who tries to change this order. If anyone tries to destroy this temple in Jerusalem, may God destroy that person. I, Darius, have ordered it. This order must be obeyed quickly and completely. The temple completed and dedicated. So Tetanai, the governor of the area west of the Euphrates River, Shathar, Bozanai, and the men with them obeyed King Darius's order. They obeyed the order quickly and completely, so the Jewish leaders continued to build. Encouraged by the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah son of Edo, they had great success. They finished building the temple as the God of Israel had commanded, and Osiris, Darius, and Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, had ordered. The temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar. That was in the sixth year of the rule of King Darius. Then the Israelites celebrated the dedication of God's temple with great joy. The priests, the Levites, and all the other people who had returned from captivity joined in the celebration. This is the way they dedicated God's temple. They offered 100 bulls, 200 rams, and 400 lambs. And they offered 12 male goats for all Israel for a sin offering. That is one goat for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then they chose the priests in their groups and the Levites in their groups to serve in God's temple in Jerusalem. They did these things as it is written in the book of Moses. The Passover Festival On the 14th day of the first month, the Jews who had returned from captivity celebrated Passover. All the priests and Levites made themselves clean and ready to celebrate Passover. The Levites killed the Passover lamb for all the Jews who had returned from captivity. They did that for their brothers, the priests, and for themselves. So all the Israelites who had returned from captivity ate the Passover meal. Other people washed themselves and made themselves pure from the unclean things of the people living in that country. These people also shared in the Passover meal. They did this so that they could go to the Lord, the God of Israel, for help. They celebrated the festival of unleavened bread with great joy for seven days. The Lord made them very happy because he had changed the attitude of the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria had helped them do the work on God's temple. Ezra chapter 7 verses 1 through 10. Ezra comes to Jerusalem. After these things, during the rule of King Artaxerxes of Persia, Ezra came to Jerusalem from Babylon. Ezra was the son of Sariah. Sariah was the son of Azariah. Azariah was the son of Hilkiah. Hilkiah was the son of Shalom. Shalom was the son of Zadok. Zadok was the son of Ahitab. Ahitab was the son of Amariah. Amariah was the son of Azariah. Azariah was the son of Mareah. Mareath was the son of Zerahiah. Zerahiah was the son of Usi. Usi was the son of Buki. Buki was the son of Abushua. Abishua was the son of Phinehas. Phinehas was the son of Eleazar. Eleazar was the son of Aaron, the high priest. Ezra came to Jerusalem from Babylon. He was a teacher and knew the law of Moses very well. The law of Moses was given by the Lord, the God of Israel. King Artaxerxes gave Ezra everything he asked for because the Lord was with Ezra. Among the people who came with Ezra were Israelites, priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants. 
They arrived in Jerusalem during the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month, seventh year that Artaxerxes was king. Ezra left Babylon on the first day of the first month and arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. With God's blessing, his journey went well. Ezra had always given his time and attention to study and obeying the law of the Lord. He also loved to teach its rules and commandments to others in Israel. Revelation chapter 12 to chapter 13 verse 1. The woman giving birth and the dragon. And then a great wonder appeared in heaven. There was a woman who was clothed with the sun, and the moon was under her feet. She had a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out with pain because she was about to give birth. Then another wonder appeared in heaven. There was a giant red dragon. The dragon had seven heads with a crown on each head. It also had ten horns. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and threw them down to the earth. It stood in front of the woman who was ready to give birth to the baby. It wanted to eat the woman's baby. As soon as it was born, the woman gave birth to a son who would rule all the nations with an iron rod, and her child was taken up to God and to his throne. The woman ran away to the desert, to a place that God had prepared for her. There she would be taken care of for 1,260 days. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they were not strong enough. The dragon and its angels lost their place in heaven. It was thrown down out of heaven. This giant dragon is that old snake, the one called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world into the wrong way. The dragon and its angels were thrown to the earth. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, the victory and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah have now come because the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown out. He is the one who accused them day and night before our God. They defeated him by the blood sacrifice of the Lamb and by the message of God that they told people. They did not love their lives too much. They were not afraid of death. So rejoice, you heavens, and all who live there. But it will be terrible for the earth and sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with anger. He knows he doesn't have much time. The dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth. So he chased the woman who had given birth to the child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle. Then she could fly to the place that was prepared for her in the desert. There she would be taken care of for three and a half years. There she would be away from the dragon. Then the dragon poured water out of its mouth like a river. It poured the water towards the woman so that the flood would carry her away. But the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that came from the mouth of the dragon. Then the dragon was very angry with the woman. It went away to make war against all her other children. Her children are those who obey God's commands and tell the true story about Jesus. The dragon stood on the seashore. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads. There was a crown on each of its horns. And there were insults, using God's name written on each head. Psalm chapter 145, verses 8 through 13. The Lord is kind and merciful, patient and full of unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He shows his mercy to everything he made. Lord, all you have made will give thanks to you. Your faithful people will praise you. They will tell how great your kingdom is and how powerful you are. So others will learn about the mighty things you do, about the glory of your kingdom, 
how marvelous it is. Your kingdom will never end, and you will rule forever. The Lord can be trusted in all he says. He is loyal in all that he does. Thank you, everyone. That was day 354. Join us for day 355. Hey, that's only 10 days before we're finished, everyone. We'll continue in the book of Ezra. Guess what? The young scribe and fanboy Ezra becomes the governor of Judah. And King Artaxerxes gives him all kind of spending money. Enough money to throw a party. But it's very important. Remember, he is in the Persian Empire. And everybody's got to follow God's law. Or they're going to be dead dead or punished, tortured or banished. Yes, church and state have become one. And continuing in the book of Revelation, a huge beast comes out of the ocean. And this guy has seven heads and ten horns with a crown on each one. And like some crazy Japanese anime, the dragon actually gives this sea creature its power. And people start to worship the sea beast and the dragon. But we're not done with beasts. As another one comes out of the earth, and this one has two horns. But this beast does have a true identity. If you know the beast's number, and that number happens to be 666. Six, six. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.